Jackson and West Tennessee. Time to wake up and get those questions ready. John Allen is on the set. We're about ready to kick off another episode of Tricks of the Trade. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jim. How are you today? I'm quite well. How about yourself? Well, tolerable, I guess. Kind of hard to wake up this morning. A little, little yeah, dreary it outside. Was. And... It, well, I, told, I told John, other John, John Rawl is here. He's our technical man. We're on uh, Facebook Live right now on y'all.com, Y-A-L-L without the apostrophe, dot com on Facebook, and also on News Talk West Tennessee. You can get us there also and uh, kind of get uh, an insight as to what it looks like from our viewpoint. Well, that's true. That's yeah. true. It's always all them different viewpoints are good. You true. know, it's uh, good to get a different grasp on things from <laughs> From time to time. Yes, it would. You yes, know it it's would. two weeks to Christmas. I know that. Two weeks yesterday, as a matter of fact. At two weeks from today, we'll be cleaning up boxes and paper, and it'll all be over. Well. That's sad, isn't it? That is, because it's kind of got here a little too quick, and uh, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> um, I was in a store yesterday. I had to go pick up a, an item that was being uh, having some work done on it, and uh Another customer whom I knew walked in at, at the same time, and the lady who owned the store said, I said, good Lord, man, what are you doing here? It's not Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about you because you're, you're, you're one of my designated Christmas Eve shoppers. Yeah, you know, that's when things get excited. And you can <laughs> get in the, into the spirit and all that stuff, but uh, I guess we'll get there eventually. I think I'm going to wander out a little bit into that uh, abyss this afternoon. Yeah. You know, we got a we're gonna uh, we we got to tend to some children today, uh-huh. and it's that time. And Santa Claus is in Jackson, Tennessee. That's right, you got to be down there to help him out. That's right. You know, and uh, you know, I, I did not realize this. You know, I, I'm kind of in my own little world sometimes <laughs> dealing with construction, but there's just not that many Santa Clauses around. A lot of the helpers are are uh, decided to be elsewhere. Well, you know, I guess, you know, with all the social distancing and all the stuff they that you have to go through this year, I'm guessing that a lot of those helpers weren't needed. Well, Some that just the, puts a little more pressure on the big guy, but he's going to be able to handle it oh, uh, yeah. without a oh, doubt. Yeah. And, uh, but we, we are uh, we're doing everything we can in downtown Jackson. We got Santa Claus down there. We do. We got him in his little house, and uh, he's going to be there today from 11 to 2. And then again, from 6 to 8 tonight. Right. And then he's got to go get his slate aligned, you know, and then he'll be back next Thursday and do it all over again. Got to get the runners rotated. That's right. Get the <laughs> runners rotated. Take it down to Mitchell's down there, you know, or, or what's your place uh, on, over on Hollywood that helps sponsor your show. Yeah. And he, he'll uh, – He'll get everything lined up for Santa's sled, so we'll be all right. That no doubt do it. about that it. That will yeah. do it. No doubt about it. We got a text, and I don't think it has anything to do with us. The, uh, okay. All right. Texter, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. We'll see if we can get that uh, that uh, worked out in, in just a moment. We are apparently having some overlap with uh, – with 101.5 this morning, so we're going to find out what that problem is and see if we can get that fixed. Our phone number here is uh, 731-891-6161. If you'd like to call in and talk to John this morning, it's always more fun that way. John loves to interact with people and give you the uh, – that, and that way, if you've got a question, you don't have to text three or four times giving us additional information, although that's cool too. We can do it that way. You can. And that text line is 731-410-7560, as some of you have uh, have already uh, already figured out. Uh, another skinny, one, skinny fingers only now. When you get big fingers, you get you don't spell very good. True. So, so you've got, you got <laughs> to get it right now. I have that problem, yeah. Good. Yeah, I get, get three letters at once. That's right. <laughs> yeah. well, it is, it is, okay, let me see what I can do here. Hang on one second. Uh, John, uh, jump in and uh, and start. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on here on, on the board. Well, all right. We're just going to talk about some stuff this morning. And uh, here it is, two weeks before Christmas. Got to get out and uh, take care of getting a few things together for uh, uh, the family and friends and and other people that's uh, around town. And uh, so I always get asked this question, you know, what would be a good thing to get for Christmas? Well, I'm a little twisted in what I think about getting, and uh, but it's effective. And I have come up with kind of a list of things that 
I think you ought to, everybody ought to have one. Every household ought to have one. Ah, okay. And and Jimmy, you you fulfilled my wishes a few years ago with one of these items, which is still in service <laughs> at my home. <laughs> I think but, I know. It has a yeah, yellow handle on it. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, you know, from a home improvement standpoint. It's always good to have these things around the house because you never know when right. you're going to need them. And the first thing on the list is a plunger for the bathroom. Right. Now, those of you might be kind of snickering out there, but I'm telling you, you don't need one until you need one. But when you need one, you got to have one. Yeah. And if you don't have one, you better have a good one because uh, things could kind of get exciting there when the water starts rising. And uh, I tell everybody to go and don't go to the dime store, and I'm dating myself now, and get one of these little bitty, yeah. you know, teeny tiny plungers. If you're going to do some plunging, get one of the big boys. Get the, get one with a handle on it, a wooden handle so you know you mean business, and get one with an inverted bulb inside of it. Right. And uh, if you'll go out and get a real good plunger, one like the plumbers use, you know, and uh, get one of those, have it on hand, and it will last you many, many years. I know I've got two in my house right now. One of them's probably as old as my youngins, and it still works fine because it's made out of uh, rubber, got a wooden handle, does a real good job. Now, you don't necessarily want to have one of these next to your toilet they take up a lot of room but you need to have one out in the garage somewhere yeah. and and that is a closet auger now that's got a little crank on the end of it uh -huh. but it's basically a coiled cable that you can run down in your toilet and pull out things that don't belong there like little toy trucks and wires and things that from your little toilet deodorants and things that you never know when the kids are at home what right. they will throw down the toilet. That's for sure. And uh, aside from the obvious stuff you think <laughs> might be down there, but a lot of times it's not. You'd be surprised what you can pull out. I have pulled out many curious things from <laughs> fire trucks to... Uh, Stuffed animals. Uh, little giraffes. Little giraffes. Okay. It's hard for the neck of a giraffe to get through the <laughs> trap of a toilet. I don't know why. Is that biblical? No, that was a camel that, that talked about getting through the eye of the needle. That wasn't a giraffe. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I digress. Bear with me here, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you, some kid just heard you, and he's going to be putting a camel down the <laughs> toilet before the end of the day. <laughs> That's true. Oh, oh man. Uh, another thing, you know, that you ought to have, Everybody ought to have one around the house, and if you get one of these and you get a good one, you'll never have to buy another one. And that's just a little old stepladder, a little four- or six-foot stepladder. Yep. Have it around, put it on a little hook in the garage, and uh, when you're changing light bulbs or, or getting something out of the top cabinet in the, in the kitchen, you'll pull this thing out and you'll think about whoever gave it to you, and um, you'll have it for a long time. Now, another thing that I always have on my list... And a lot of people don't have one anymore because they don't think they need it. Yeah. And and I almost wanted to take it off, but about that time, I had to pull one out yesterday. But it's a good 100-foot extension cord. Yes. A good one. A good heavy one. A good 14-gauge cord that you can run anything from a trouble light to your weed eater outside on and have a good cord. Have it properly maintained, roll it up to where it doesn't get all knotted up and hang it up, and always have one of those on on hand in case you need to get something that's just a little farther than it needs to be away. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Now, on top of that, and here it is wintertime, and pretty soon we're going to get some icy weather, I hope. Well, they're talking about a possibility of a little mix this week. Well, you so. know, that possibility gets everybody running to the grocery I know, store. I know. And uh, we had a snowflake or two last week. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and, and it was kind of pretty. It was gorgeous, yeah. You know, I was I was running all over trying to, to get enough enough to make a snowball, but I got out of breath real quick. It just <laughs> there wasn't enough of them coming down. <laughs> My girls were out in the driveway trying to catch them on their tongue like Lucy on Charlie Brown. <laughs> 
Bless their hearts. Uh, yeah. Oh. But uh, it, when things happen, when it gets real cold, emergencies might happen around your house. Right. And there's nothing like having a frozen water line when it gets really, really cold and you've got water cascading uh, down in your house and you go to find a place to cut off the water mm -hmm. and you got snow and ice on the ground and you can't find the water meter. Right. So a little trick I learned a long time ago, you know, these little, you, you can go to a hardware store and get them, these little, uh, little flags, little. Yeah, little like, wires. It's got a little orange flag or yeah, any like color you want. Like a surveyor uses. Yeah, mark, like surveyors yeah, use. Yeah, mark corners and things. Yeah. If you'll take one of those things out there where your water reader is and stick it in the ground and let it stick up about six, eight inches, just yeah. enough to where you can see it, if you have an emergency, you'll be able to find that water meter. Now, if you find it, you got to be able to turn it off. So that's the other thing you need to give for Christmas. And that is a water meter key. Yes. Five bucks will get you a water meter key that will last you a lifetime. But then you got to find out how to cut it off. There you go. See, that still now, baffles me. And I know how to do it. But it's still, when I looked down in there, I said, that can't happen. Well, there's so many different kinds out there. There, yeah. there are meters out there that, you know, have that little slot that runs with the meter, uh -huh. and you'll turn it sideways. Yeah. In other words, it, the, it's running like from 12 to 6 o'clock, and yeah. you want to turn it 3 to 9. Yeah, like a gas, gas yeah. valve. Yeah, there's some like that. Yeah. And then there are some that will just spin around and not stop, and you got to find the little sweet spot. And then there's some that you turn around that it'll stop about 11 o'clock, and that will cut everything off. So yeah. I don't know what kind of meter you got, but whichever one you have, you need to learn how to operate it. And if you've had a lot of of uh, groundwater that might have gotten in there and you can't even see the meter yeah or maybe dirt has washed in and it's got to cut off cut out you need to go out there with the tablespoon and reach down in there and dig all that uh, 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 dirt out to where you can get to the cutoff yep. now you got water to deal with in the winter but sometimes you have a little gas emergency you get smelling gas so everybody needs to have in their stocking a pair of channel lock pliers yep and, uh, and know where your gas meter is and be able to go out and be able to know how to turn the gas valve off at the meter. Now, we're fortunate here in Jackson to have an excellent utility company. Yeah, we do. But getting them out there as quick as sometime they need to be, I mean, they may have to drive from way across town and you got an emergency on your hand. So to be able to, to cut that valve off and know how to cut it off is extremely important. No doubt. Now. Now, while we're on the water key. Yeah. Water meter key. Okay. okay. Got one because you told me I need to have one. That's right. So I got it. And then I'm thinking, where do I where do I put it so that I don't really have to think when I need it? Because when you when you got water gushing, you're in a hurry, right? So here's what I did. And you can do it or not do it. I took me two good-sized nails, and I put them in the wall in the sheetrock wall in my garage right by the garage door there at about go. head high and that water key just hangs right in between those two nails that's right and if i'm on the way out of that garage door to my meter all i gotta do is reach up and grab it on the way through i don't have to look for it that's exactly right we, i did good didn't I? you did real good <laughs> and and you didn't have to buy nothing to go to hang it up no either. i had the nails already yeah which is another yeah. thing on my list. Nails. Hammering nails. There you go. There you you, go. You, you having an assortment of nails and an assortment of screws and a real life hammer that you put in the palm of your hand. You may have to watch YouTube to know how to operate it. <laughs> but, but know how to drive a ha or drive a nail with a hammer. Yeah. And and you can do that, which leads to my next item, which is a screwdriver, a Phillips head and a standard slot-headed uh, uh, screwdriver yeah, yeah. and screws to go with it in case you need to, you know, get something all screwed up. So <laughs> one of those things. Or in case and, you've already gotten it screwed up and need to unscrew it. And yeah. the final two things, and then we can probably go to our first break, is having a good tape measure so you can measure whatever you need. Now, used to everybody had a yardstick, but those things are a little hard to come by right now. Yeah. But if you get you a good 25-foot tape or a 16-foot tape, 
and then some zip ties. Uh-huh. Now, why zip ties? It's just because they're handy to yeah. tie things up. And uh, if you have some of those, you can handle most any emergency around the house. So I always give this list to folks about this time of the year. If they just got a person that they just don't know what to get them, and uh, you want to give them something useful, they'll look at you kind of funny when you hand them, hand them a plunger, yeah. but they'll thank you about a March or April when they have to use it. <laughs> Absolutely. After the rest of the family is gone and clogged everything up while they were there. You'll, you'll need it while family's now, home probably too. If you, if you, if you just, it just rang a bell, a commercial that's on television. If you've seen, I don't, and I think it's an insurance commercial. I'm really not sure, to be honest with you. But they're, they're nice-looking couple sitting there talking about we just moved into our new home, and, and but we have an ant problem. And it's like Aunt Bessie and Aunt Sue and Aunt Genevieve, <laughs> and they're all in there giving them a fit. You know, that's an awfully big house. I hope you can keep it clean. And the other one's going through the refrigerator going, expired, expired. <laughs> so they have an ant problem. It took me a couple of times to figure out what was going on. on yeah, well, you have to good. watch that one. I like yeah. the one about the cloggers. Yeah, that's good. It's the same company. The that's same right. Company. It's one of the is that yeah. Geico or something like that? Or yeah, I think it is. It's yeah. one of those. Clog yeah. problem. Yeah, that's a little little clog problem. So that's all right. Absolutely. We have a texter coming in. Text line is the Victory Honda text line seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. Call in number. Call us this morning. We won't talk to you. John needs to talk to you this morning. Seven three one eight nine one six one six one. It's that easy. That simple. And this texter says. What if you have a well? Can you shut the water off at the breaker box by shutting off the breaker to the pump? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll take a little while for it to wind down, but that's the way you do it right there. Unless you've got a manual cutoff somewhere that uh, in some of the newer homes, you're required to have a cutoff inside the house, yeah. but uh, you may not have one, but just cutting the breaker off is uh, is the best way to do that. Now, I've, I've, I'm a city boy. I, we've lived in the city since we got married. I you know, I used to go to the country a lot because that's where my grandparents grew up. I lived out at Beach Bluff, but haven't had that much uh, contact with a with a well system. My question is to you these days, if you shut the breaker off and shut the pump down, do you have to do anything to reprime that thing, or is it a, are most of the new ones self priming? Yeah, they're self priming, and uh, they they work pretty good. And and uh, you know, if you've got a well, um, it, finding a good well man's hard to to come across right now. There's yeah. just everything's so automated, and they try to sell you in the big box stores, uh, uh, you know, a system to which all self contained, and you just you know slide it in the hole, and it's it's. But now I'm I'm lost for words this morning on what I'm trying to say, and and remain nice before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, when you need somebody, you need somebody. Yeah. And uh, a good well man, if you got one, you keep his number handy. Absolutely. It's kind of like yeah. a garage door, man. If you got a good one of those, you keep that number handy. That's too. right. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. You mentioned the break. It is time for one of those. And uh, we want to remind everyone that we are sponsored, our title sponsors on this show and on the Thursday Honey Do's and Honey Don't Show. West End Fence Company and Economy Siding and Windows. And we're going to take a quick about 90 seconds here, and then we'll come back and talk about one of those fine folks that helps us do what we do. Be right back. Thank you. Off-road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. Hey, this is Jimmy Leach inviting you to tune in to my show, The Investigator, every Saturday morning at 9 right here on the Talk of Jackson 93.1. My friend Brad McCoy and I talk about current headlining cases, how law enforcement really works, cold cases, serial killers, and much more. Plus, we'll have special guests like former state attorney generals, private detectives, gang experts, sheriffs and former sheriffs, chiefs of police, and many others. The Investigator with me, Jimmy Leach, every Saturday morning at 9 on the Talk of Jackson 93.1. Caution, listening to this radio station may make you hungry. Good thing we're broadcasting from the Dixie Cafe, WTJS 93.1 FM for West Tennessee. 
Yes, we are live from the Dixie Cafe in the Old Country Store at uh, Saturday morning. A dreary-looking Saturday morning, but it's supposed to get better before before noon or so. Yeah, I think sunshine's going to come out. Oh, Santa's yeah. kind of hoping for that a little later on in the morning, and then it's going to turn a little colder, I hear. Yeah, it is next week. or Well, actually, tomorrow. More rain coming in tomorrow is it? and tomorrow night, and then it's going to cool down a bit. With uh, We're going to be in the... Uh, 20s and 30s for the lows and 40s and low 50s for the highs for the next three or four days. So, I heard it's going to snow about knee deep to a giraffe. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's that giraffe again. In Canada. In Canada. <laughs> I just wish it was around here. Yeah, I don't think uh, from what Eddie Holmes – Eddie, Eddie uh, Eddie's one of those weather guys that's hard to tack down on a long, far-out uh, uh, prognostication, and he's not committing to anything yet, but it looks like it's probably going to be wet and warm. I keep hearing that. Huh? Yeah, I just want too. them to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I can't right. help it. I know. Hey, that's what, you know. We always it's not personal. grew up wanting a white Christmas, and had a couple back in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember one, oh, and yeah. then I also remember one when I when the year I got my first new bicycle, and you it was could, seventy you, degrees. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. But it was good for my new bicycle because I got out and showed everybody what I just got for Christmas. There you go. Yeah. You had to show off but a little bit. My little huffy. Yeah, huffy. Yeah, little yeah, huffy from bicycle. Western Auto. That was a huffy That's was right. a Western Auto brand, I think. I like Western Auto. I did, too. I did, Man, too. you go up there and see the, those little pedal cars uh-huh. that you used to have. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, they're great, yep. you know. Absolutely, absolutely. One of our title sponsors who we mentioned just a moment ago, West 10 Fence Company. And I've had some experience with them recently. They did an outstanding job at repairing some of my fencing. And uh, John uses them quite often. I do. I do. They uh, they are my fence company. I, I claim them. Yep. And uh, because, you know, I know that I call them. I don't have to worry about them. They tell me when they're going get to get there. And they get it done. And then they get gone. And next thing you know, you've got one of them special fences like you got that not only does it keep them in, it, it keeps, keeps things out. out. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know they were going to do that. You know, that's a two for one deal if I ever Absolutely, heard one. Absolutely, man. You got to keep that on the on the down low. They liable to bill me for. Yeah, it. that's one of them bonus things, you know. <laughs> exactly it, right. uh, but exactly. it is. They're, they're good folks, and uh, it's nice having people that know what they're doing, and um, you can communicate with them. A lot of you know. Sometimes you get folks out the house kind of hard to talk to because yeah. they don't know our language yeah they kind of speak in in their their language and, yeah you know you don't go huh what does that mean you know yeah and uh, you know and, and nothing is wrong with that but i like to be able to talk to whoever's working at my house Me too. you know so Me you too. can uh, uh tell them your version of things yep. you know as yeah, if like, they really want to know so i've gotten spoiled over the years because using using your services for a long time and then my heat and air guys the same way fence people the same way you, you you feel comfortable when they come. You say, "All right, here's what I need done." You know, uh, I'll be in here if you have a problem. Give me a call. That's and, right. And you don't with West End Fence, you don't have to worry about that. Well, that's right. They're all educated in what they do. They all have a PhD, whether it's automated yep. or not. And that's a post hole digger, folks. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just one of those things. So if you need to get a fence put up or have an automated gate put up. Mm-hmm. Whether it be chain link, wrought iron, barbed wire, wooden, whatever it might be, whatever fencing needs you have, give them a call at West 10 Fence Company. And you got a phone number over there. I do. It's 731-668-5959. They're located at 2158 Hollywood Drive. That's right. Right here in Jackson, Tennessee. Right. And I noticed coming in this morning, having nothing to do with fencing, but uh, it does have to do with keeping things out. They are working on some of the uh, on-ramps up here on the bypass on the I-40. So if you're headed that way, the, there are THP cars with the blue lights on. I think they're moving some of those temporary barriers this weekend. So be aware that there's a lot going on at Highland and at Campbell Street and all the way out to Highway 70 if you're using uh, I-40. You know, I just want them to finish something before they start <laughs> something else. Maybe if they're taking down barriers, that means... I think we, we might be, I think be about we, done. We may be seeing some striping in some areas soon. Ooh. And three lanes going both directions. I'm guessing now because I haven't seen that from TDOT yet. Mm. But, uh, well, you know, they're doing a fine job, but oh, yeah. I, I've about had enough of this. I tell you what, that's a major project. You know, you don't you, you think about widening, you just think about where well, you run a dozer down through there, throw down some gravel and some asphalt, and let's go home. What's wrong with that? Well, because it's because the road is wider and the bridges ain't. <laughs> well, that's true. That's yep. true. But, yep. you know. 
and, and they are. It looks like they are doing uh, doing a good job now on putting some some uh, on la- on ramps and off ramps on there that have some run out distance on them. So you don't have a a semi barreling down on you 60 feet behind you and you got to get off quick. Uh, that's nerve wracking. Maybe we've done away with that. I think we probably have. Well, you think so? Yeah, I think so. I think well, so. maybe, maybe so. That'd we be shall, good. We shall see. Seven three one eight nine one six one six one. The call in number here on Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Victory Honda text line seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. Just because it's a dreary day doesn't mean you can't give us a call or a text. I got to tell you a true story. Funny Shoot. little little humorous story. I like it. Absolutely true. Happened to me last weekend. Now. You know, you read these little things that that uh, tells you helps you to identify yourself. Right. And these were like the twenty five things that you, if you identify with any of these, you're officially old. <laughs> well, one of them in particular hit home with me because I kind of get excited when this happens, and not in a good way. Uh oh. So I was in my the grocery store last weekend. You know, I knew what I wanted. I knew where it was. Right. And I was just going to grab a cart and go in there and get it, only to find out they rearranged things. Ooh, they hid it from you. Now, I'm telling you, there ain't nothing more aggravating when you get an old feller like me and can't find what he used to know exactly where it was. Yeah. And you go over there to get your beanie weenies, <laughs> and there's taters in its spot. Uh-huh. And, and it, it's just wrong. But. I kid you not, I'm I'm in the produce aisle. You know, this time of the year, they put some strange stuff in produce. Yeah. Fruits you don't normally grab and gnaw on or peel or whatever you do. So right. here we are. I'm at the end of the produce aisle on the left side next to the Velveeta, <laughs> which I don't know why that's there. <laughs> I told you, because they can't put it with the cheese. And the, then there is a, there's this family. Now, there's a little six-year-old, maybe five or six-year-old, in the buggy sitting in the, the yeah, basket. A little, yeah, a little jump seat. And then, the, <laughs> and then there's a teenager, and then there's an older lady there. Must be the mama. Okay. Now, at the end of this aisle, there is a huge cardboard box of strange-looking fruit. <laughs> now, the teenager looks at it, and now... It, it This hit me so strange and so funny, I had to write it down. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to ref, refer to my note right here because at that time, I knew I would forget it. But there was a box. They were pomegranates. There. Ah. Yeah. So this teenager looked at him and says, look at there, Mama. There's some of those pomegranates. And then... She said, that's not the way you say there. They're pomegranates. <laughs> pomegranates. Pomegranates. Okay. And the other one says, no, you mean Pomeranian. <laughs> and the six-year-old, who was the smartest one in the bunch, says, no, that's a dog. Can we go get what we came here for? <laughs> I like that kid. I like that kid. Oh, that's but, cool. But, yeah, that was, it was just – and I laughed. I was over there <laughs> laughing, and I had to pull off the corner of an open box that somebody had opened up. I promise I didn't do it. Uh-huh. And tore off a piece of cardboard on the side of the Velveeta just to write down what they said because I knew I would forget <laughs> it. Palm grates, huh? Palm grates oh, and Pomeranians. Okay. Pomeranians. <laughs> yeah, you got to be sure and peel them Pomeranians. That's good. right. You, you got to peel them. them in a salad or something. Mm. Like yeah, for sure. Uh, texter from the Victory Honda text line. And we were talking about the bypass and the I-40. Texter says, not to be critical, but the bypass construction at the interstate just doesn't seem to flow well. I like the clover leaves. You know, we went from the clover leaves to the turn across the yeah. signal control turn across and be honest with you texture it's, it's a little foreign looking still to me and i come through there numerous times a day i have not had the opportunity to use that crossover or that way to get on the interstate yet uh, i usually catch it from a ramp coming south or or, or north but uh yeah that it, it is a it is a new look and I, i'm not sure whether i like it or not because i haven't used it yet 
Well, they got to get their signalization right yeah. in there. It looks a little strange. It's kind of like, and we have one of these in Jackson already, down where the uh, the bypass goes over Royal Street. Yes. And uh, you go down the side ramp, and then you cross uh, over, and you got that traffic light underneath the bridge. I think that's yeah. kind of what this is. But what prompted that? I'm told. I'm 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 not a uh, traffic type person, but right. You know, people were coming off the interstate so fast in that clover leaf, they were either running off the clover leaf or the semis were tilting over. True. And a, a load would shift and all of that. So it's it's kind of one of them safety things. Uh, of course, you know, could just slow down, but that would be too easy. <laughs> too easy. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm sure there was a whole bunch of white coats involved oh, in this I, decision. I, I guarantee you. Lots of engineering went into that. Texter, thanks for that, uh, that comment. I, you know, I may try one of them on the way home because I've got to go east when i leave here so uh i may i may give that a shot and see what i think about it if yeah. it's open they were closed when i came through there this morning moving barriers but i'm so. trying not to even go that way yeah i you know. i avoided it i have not been out Omanina road campbell street since they started the demolition well you can't there. get there yeah you, can't you get know there if you got a hankering for a donut don't go that <laughs> go way go around the long way <laughs> Oh, man, it's Tricks of the Trade. It is a Saturday morning with John Allen, and we have a uh, call coming in. And uh, let me uh, get this to the board here. John, give that a shot. All right, good morning, and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Good morning. Hey, how are you? I, I, called, you, I called you last weekend about uh, some lights flickering in the kitchen. Okay. We was talking about probably lost a, probably lost a neutral somewhere. Or loose neutral. Yep. All right. Right after that, I was listening to the radio, and somebody texted in. He said, "Go down to your breaker box and listen for a buzzing sound if you if you can hear one." That's right. Yep. Sure enough, went down to the went down to the basement, went down there, plain as day. I never heard it, and there it was, just intermediately buzzing. That's right. You had Turned a breaker off, front. Buzzing stopped. Yep. Huh. I pulled the breaker out, and then that the little clip on the breaker that fits onto the rail. Yep. Just sure enough, it just it didn't look burned, but it didn't look good. It had gotten hot. Place the breaker, problem solved. That's what you got to do. Why did it get hot? I mean, well, I'll, let me explain that to you because I'll almost bet you that you had a fuse box that was ITE. Am I right or wrong? That. That's it. Okay. All right. That's what That's I th did. didn't even have to see it. I knew what it was. <laughs> For whatever reasons that I don't understand, the connection where that little fork on the bus bar goes into the breaker, when they get just the least bit overheated, they will crystallize and heat builds up and it'll fry that right. breaker. And uh, you're lucky. Yeah that you were able to replace the breaker and put one back in. Most of the time, you have to relocate that breaker and find a, a, another spot to plug right. in a new breaker or put in what's called a tandem breaker where you can put two into one spot. But that that is from a bad connection, and when heat builds up, that causes that to fry, and it is a very, very common problem. So if I hadn't found it in time, my breaker box itself had been in, it would have been damaged. Well, the breaker that, box would have been damaged. That, that breaker snaps into. Uh, say that again. When say, the breaker snaps into, gets uh, its connection. Right. It looks like aluminum. It is aluminum. Is it? It's aluminum, and that's why he. Why in the hell do they use aluminum? Because <laughs> it's that cheap. Is so stupid. Well, it is, but that whole bar. On that panel is is aluminum, and uh, I'll tell you this: the wires coming into your house are aluminum. Part of the whole show is me on the phone. And uh, so we got a little feedback going on here. I don't know what's happening, but anyway, it's just the way they make them. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to get rid of it. Hang on with me. There. They're uh, they're all that away. Uh, even what I call the better breaker boxes, such as a Square D box, they have real good connections yeah. but they've even changed their boxes now and gone to a cheaper brand called Homeline and it's made the same way as the one you're experiencing so it's very critical that you're able to uh, 
size those breakers and make sure that you don't overload one of them because if you overload them and the heat builds up not only are you going to have problems with that one breaker if you let it go on long enough the breakers on each side of it and across from of it across from it will be affected and uh, season is here it's just kind of one of those things of Dyer is ready to meet your holiday needs they have great sales for the holidays Door oh, yeah. John, I'm working on it. okay all right uh, I hope I got your question answered I hope you're able to hear me driver bit set 2499 50 right, thank you all right appreciate you calling uh, folks we've got a little te- technical difficulty going on here don't really know what it is but uh, I promise I didn't trip over the cord back here but we're just kind of Keep on going and see kind of what's going it. on. You I got it? I don't know it? where it came from, but I killed it. it I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm sorry it, about uh, that, folks. Those I little, have no idea where that came from or why it came, but it did. We was hacked. We was hacked. That's right. Here's uh, another text on the Victory Honda text line. Mr. Allen, good thing you kept your day job on on the pomegranate. Wait a minute. Yeah. Good thing you kept your day job on the pomegranate episode. That very thing has consumed me since boyhood, and right hand I raise. I filled rooms and boxes and dumpsters or two. It, uh, if the bug bites, uh, did, 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 uh, and, and the rest of it is garbled. I can't, I can't read it. But life is a blessing, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Texture. We, we got a bad connection on the text line there. We couldn't read what you wrote anyway another one says ah the feedback is driving me crazy me too partner (laughs) me too i don't i don't know who's in there with us today but uh we're gonna have to charge them a fee Uh, not a paid sponsor no doubt no absolutely not absolutely not but i think i think we as andy griffith once said i believe we got her if she don't jump Oh, me. Listen to John Allen on Tricks of the Trade and some other folks from Lord knows where. That's right. On the show this morning. We're going to take another quick commercial break, about 90 seconds or so, and we'll be back with more. 410-7560, the Victory Honda text line. And I'll tell you what, John, we just had a call pop up. Let me let me get that first, and then we'll go to commercial. Let's see what happens here. Uh, go for it, John. All right. Good morning, and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Good morning. Hey, how are I you? Gotta, uh, have a ceiling fan and put me a regular light up and I went to go to turn the, the wall switch on and off to get the light to, to turn on and off and guess what? It stayed on. So the only way I was able to turn my fan on and off evidently was by the pull chain. Is there some way I can hook that thing up to a wall switch? Yes, there is. Um You'll have to take the canopy apart at the ceiling, and there will be three wires up there. There will be a black one, a white one, and either a red or a blue wire. Now, the white wire is your neutral. The other two colored wires, one feeds the fan, and the other one feeds your light kit. If you'll tie those two wires together, and time into that switch that you've got on the wall over there. When you flip on the switch, the fan and the light will come on. And then you can control them by the oh, pull yeah. chain. Yeah, I, no, I took the ceiling fan down, John, is what I'm saying, and I put a regular light up. Okay. And evidently, it wasn't tied to a wall switch, the fan, originally. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so... But now, if there is other black wires tied together. There's about three of them tied together up there, and then the white wires tied together up there. And I don't, I don't know if I'd have to run a whole new line uh, to a wall switch. No, um, I mean, or, you, when you put a light fixture up there, you're saying the switch won't work anymore? Is that what you're saying? The switch won't work anymore? Well, it's not that it don't work. I don't think it was ever hooked up to a switch. Well, Maybe you should be able. To, uh, yeah, it may take a meter for you to do that, but you should be able to identify the wire you need that goes to the switch to where you can flip it on and off. Uh, everybody wires things a little differently, but uh, if you had a good multimeter. 
uh, to where you could identify your hot wires and your switch legs, you'll be able to tie them together appropriately. Uh, and without seeing it myself, I really, I don't want to tell you something and it'd be wrong, but uh, if you can't figure that out yourself, you may end up having to, to call an electrician to get the appropriate combination of the wires up there. And uh, if you can't figure it out or know anybody to call, call me at my office first of the week, and I'll be happy to drop by and show it to you. Okay. All right. All right. I appreciate you. All right. Thanks for calling. Thank you, caller. Appreciate that. John, a text before we go to commercial break. John, can you vent a bath fan through the soffit? Yes. Most of them are. And, uh, you know, it's, it's better, in my opinion, to take it through the roof. But there are a lot of fans that uh, the discharge line will come right off the fan and go straight over to the overhang of the house and drop it into the soffit. Soffit, provided the soffit is vented. Yeah. You know, it's it's got to be able to, if you've got like vinyl siding and a, 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 a vented soffit, you'll be able to do that. And uh, Or you can always put a little discharge cap on it to where it actually blows there and not through the soffit material. But as long as your soffit is vented, you'll be able to do that. All right, Texter, thank you very much. We appreciate that. We're going to take about a 90-second commercial break here on uh, Tricks of the Trade, 410-7560. You can get in that way on the Victory Honda text line, 731-891-6161. Both operating well today. That'll get you into the phone lines, and we'll be right back. Stay with us on Tricks of the Trade. Sakura set the standard in West Tennessee for Japanese sushi rolls and hibachi grill dishes. By popular demand, Sakura added a Chinese menu. For starters, egg drop and hot and sour soup. Entrees include chicken broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, Mongolian beef, and lo mein with your choice of meat. Our Chinese lunch menu starts at just $7.95. Sakura also delivers to your home or business, or you can call ahead for pickup at 664-2878. Sakura's dining area now open and serving at 50% capacity. Sakura on Carriage House Drive. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced We Have in Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Who's under your hood? For anything at all related to a car, join me, Russ Evans. And I'm Chris Carter. And I'm Shannon Nordstrom. You don't have to be a gearhead to enjoy under the hood. We keep it light and fun and on a level that everyone can understand while you get free advice and learn about your car. Check us out on the web at underthehoodshow.com or facebook.com slash underthehoodshow and join us every week right here. Under the Hood every Saturday morning from 6 till 8. Presented by Gene Langley Ford and Humble, the dealership service built. We're more than just printing. With XMC, the possibilities are endless. Let XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, help take your business to the next level. Whether you need electronic document management to update your office, a projector system for your boardroom, a high-tech flat panel welcome center in your lobby, or an upgrade to your existing office equipment, visit XMCINC.com and let XMC and Xerox handle your product installation from start to finish, as well as providing all technical support. With nine territories in the Southeast, XMC has you covered. Caution, listening to this radio station may make you hungry. Good thing we're broadcasting from the Dixie Cafe, WTJS 93.1 FM for West Tennessee. And we've got about 15 minutes or so left in the show. That show being Tricks of the Trade with John Allen here on 93.1. Saturday mornings, every Saturday morning from 8 until 9, followed by Jimmy Leach, the investigator, from 9 until 10. Yeah. Yeah. We need to talk about our good friend, Stormy. That's right. And that's not a cloud. No, it's not. No. No, but he, it's not. 
but he can sure take care of the rain. That's right. He can make that, the water go away when a cloud does come up. That's exactly right. Economy Siding, uh, one of the sponsors that we're blessed to have here on the show, uh, excellent company. Uh, I use them all the time in my construction company, and I do it because all i got to do is call them up, tell them what to do, and they know what to do. But if you're needing some vinyl windows in your home, and I'm telling you folks, you think that's easy, but you ought to hear some of the nightmares that I hear having to go back and straighten up somebody else's mess that has put in windows wrong. And I've never had that problem with economy siding. They put When they put in replacement windows, they're properly sealed, they're properly flashed, and they look like they grew there. And it's windows that you'll be proud of. Siding, they are second to none when it comes to putting on vinyl siding and taking care of all your your cornice work, your face of boards, your soffit, making everything maintenance free. And uh, on top of that, that's just a good crew, good people. They get in, they get out, and uh, it's just a good person to have on your team. And I'm proud to have them do my work, and they need to do your work too. So don't hesitate. If you need some windows or if you need uh, some siding, Give Stormy a call at Economy Siding and Gutter Company. Yep, 422-3828 or economysiding.com. Yeah. yeah, everybody's got a dot .com now. They oh, don't yeah. have anything in the phone book. <gasps> What's a phone book? Phone book, phone book. I'm, yeah. I, I think I'm the only one that still looks at that. I was. I, I am not qualify this on the front end. I am not a watcher or a supporter of Ellen DeGeneres. Okay. That said. I happened to see on YouTube one day a clip from one of her shows, and they picked a young lady out of the out of the audience. She's early twenties, right? Mm-hmm. And they gave her two minutes and two items in order to to win the prize. She's going to win like a flat screen TV if she could do this one thing. They gave her a phone book and a rotary dial telephone, <laughs> and told her to order a pizza. Oh, could not do it. Didn't know how to use the Yellow Pages at all. Yep. Never seen the Yellow Pages. But the funny part was, after they gave her the phone number, which she couldn't find, to the pizza parlor, watching that poor girl try to operate a rotary telephone was the funniest thing I have seen in a while. Oh, they, it, it is. They just don't know how to do it. <laughs> I know. Oh. I know. I know. It's like, you know, she kept sticking her finger in there expecting to hear a beep, you know, like a push yeah, button, and yeah. nothing was happening. That's right. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Ah, different world these days, man. Different world these days. A couple little tips I want to pass on to you this yes. morning. If, um, you know, a lot of people like to hang wreaths on their uh, windows and their doors. Yep, one of mine fell off last night. Yeah. I need some help. Uh, well, you know, uh, it's awful tempting if you uh, have, say, a wooden door mm-hmm. to go and drive a nail in that door and hang something on it. I really wish you wouldn't do that. Yeah. Use one of those hangers that hangs up over the top of the door. Uh Because here's what happens. If you put a screw or a nail in the door, uh, that's where water is going to enter when you take all that down after Christmas. And it's going to start rotting your door. Now, if you have a what I call a real door, a wooden door, a wooden door, you know what that is? Uh Especially a paneled door. This time of year... When the seasons are changing, y'all, y'all keep hearing me say that houses are moving all the time. And if you've got a paneled wood door, you know, that door is expanding and it's contracting. And on a paneled door and it starts to get cold, it kind of draws up all at once sometimes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you might even hear it. Something go pop, sounds like a rifle went off in the house. Yeah. And you go in there and you can see a crack in your front door in the panel. I mean, sometimes they get large enough you can throw a small cat through them. True. And uh, getting them patched is something that is really hard to do. And it, no matter how you do it, it don't look good. So where people mess up on panel doors is they caulk all the panels to where that panel can't move and yeah. expand and contract. So the time comes when you got to patch that door. And it's really not a good way to do it, but... The reason me telling you not to hang a wreath on that door, it just seems like when you drive a nail in a wooden door, that starts the process. 
because that's where it's going to crack because that little hole that you put that nail in is going to start getting dark around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's going to start rotting a little bit. And that's going to be your weak spot. And then when the house starts contracting and the door starts contracting, that'll cause that panel to split. So what do you do? Well, there's not much you can do except try to fill the crack. The only other alternative to that is to replace the door, which can get quite expensive. Finding a wooden door nowadays is very hard. So if you can go out and fill that crack with something that doesn't get hard, the better off you are. You want like a flexible caulk. And you have a little adhesive to go with that. You want a good colored adhesive caulk. If it's if your door is painted, you can do it pretty good. You can yeah. caulk it up. And uh, the reason you want a caulk that doesn't get hard, because when this thing swells up in the summertime, you it'll try to ooze your caulk out, and then it'll draw up in the winter. So you want that joint to stay flexible. So if you do that, it'll kind of expand and contract with the door. Now, if you've got a... A wooden door that's stained on the inside, now that's a little more challenging because while you can patch it on the outside with something that you're going to paint, if you're painting it on the inside, you're going to have to start hunting at your local uh, paint store for some colored putty. And uh, I would suggest that you work some adhesive in that crack if you can. If it's wide enough that uh, you can squirt a little adhesive in it, and then get you a colored putty that resembles the color of your door and rub it in with your thumb and make sure you wipe off all the excess. And that way it won't be as noticeable. It'll seal the hole, but uh, you'd be surprised how much wind can get through that crack if you don't seal it up. And uh, you'll always be kind of drafty in there. So right. that's just one of those things. The little uh, hangers, wreath hangers is what I call them, yeah. that you were talking about, and work great. That's what I've got on mine. I don't have a wooden front door. I have a metal front door, a six, seven panel door. Six yeah, panel six door, panel door. Six panel door. And uh, those things work good because I didn't, I didn't want to put a screw in into that metal door and have it stick out like a sore thumb, you know. Yeah. So I, that's, that's, and, and that works fine. Now, what I had a problem with is I hang, I hang two wreaths, wreaths. Reefus. <laughs> Reef, Reefus. Reef, Reefus. <laughs> uh, on, on my front windows. Now, yeah. one of the windows is like a, a double window. With, that's got a, 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 a vinyl piece between them. Yeah. And I put my hanger, my uh, command hook, on that vinyl, and it does well. The other window is a big, what they used to call a, down the south, they used to call them a pitcher window. Mm-hmm. And it's all glass, so I have to put that command hook on the glass. Yeah. Glass gets hot and cold and hot and cold hot and cold well it fell off last yesterday afternoon i had to go back and put it back up again so uh is there a better way to do that on a, on a glass window well have you tried the suction cup i have they did the same thing they, they last for a while and then they'd unpucker <laughs> well you know uh you must not have licked them real good <laughs> Yeah. You gotta have an adhesive liquor. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know I did lick it. I know. I know about that. You know, that, sometimes but. you have to just string a wire all the way across them, and go from trim to trim. Yeah. And run you just a a, a real fine wire. Mo- most people will use fishing line. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Monofilament that, line. Mo- mo- yeah, yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. yeah that clear stuff That's that, it. You, that you <laughs> hold, that you pull your catfish along with. There you go. Run that from side to side, and then hook on to that. And it works pretty good that way. And if you want to leave your wire up, the fact that it's kind of clear, you don't you see don't it. You don't see it. And you can stay there all the time. See, that's a, that's another, that's extra dimensional thinking that you you have done for all these years. It's, it's like like I told you last week, trying to hang that star in my window, and I was going to knock a nail in there, put a screw in the in the in the sash, and my son says, "Why don't you just use a tension rod?" Well, duh, yeah. you know, attention you rods go. for your bathroom to hang your curtain on. Mm-hmm. I don't, I didn't think. And it worked. Well, you know, we don't, and I'm not talking about you, Jim, but, you <laughs> yeah, know. Sure you're not. Well, I'm not talking about no. you, but I mean, that's just it. We've forgotten how to think. Yeah, you're right. It, you know, you're common right. sense is not that common anymore. And, and 
when you have to do, like when we were growing up, you dealt with what you had mm-hmm. to make it work. Yeah. Now, you don't have to do that. You try to find a gadget to do do it for you. Yeah. And there's too many gadgets out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, or, you don't, and you don't need them. Or you can go to YouTube and it'll walk you step through step, you know, so you don't make that mistake and, and that you shouldn't make the second time. Yeah, well, you don't learn. Yeah. You just react. Yeah. You, do, you yeah. know, yeah. always yeah. somebody telling you what to do instead of teaching you how to do it. True. And uh, I guess I, I'm a blessed man because I had people in my life early on that would teach me and and it it's not like they wanted to tell me how to do it. They say, "Come here, Johnny. Yeah. I'm gonna show you something." Yeah. And then we went through it together, and I got when we get finished, I kind of went, "Huh? How about that?" And uh, then I knew how to do it from there on, and then I could modify it with my own version of things. Yeah. So you know, it's just kind of one of those things that you do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and and a lot a lot thing today. I don't think there's a lot of people out there that want to take the time to to train someone because they say, well, I spend all this time and effort training someone, and then they'll leave and go start a business in competition with me. You know, how many times have you seen that? So anyway, we got a text coming in on the Victory Honda text line, and uh, here here's a guy that uh, that's thinking. This this is thinking. Okay. okay. On the suction cup. Okay. He said, let the cat lick the suction cup. It'll <laughs> stick. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The only problem is I don't have a cat. And I don't want a cat. I don't want a cat. No. no. You used to have a cat, I remember, didn't you? A oh, long yeah. time ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it went on to, to wherever cats go when they pass. And, uh, Garbage we, can. And we, <laughs> ooh, oh, the PETA people going to love that Oh, one. my yeah, goodness. Yeah, but no, we did, we did not replace said cat. When, when said cat became dead cat, we did <laughs> We didn't replace her. You're not one of these that stuff your pets then and keep them around. No, you know? no. Now I did have I did have a Springer Spaniel. He passed away at the age of 15 about uh, 12 years ago, uh-huh. and I did have him cremated, and I have him in a very nice uh, walnut box. And when the one I have now ultimately goes, she's 12 now. I will do her the same way, and then I'll I'll put them in the ground together. Isn't that just sweet? Yes. Darling. Isn't that? And they never knew each other because one died and I got uh, another one. But, you know, uh-huh. Anyway, such well, is life, as they say. That's right. Yeah. Hey, I want to give a little tip right now. Here it is, two weeks before Christmas. You're fixing to have a whole bunch of folks in your house. Yeah. Well, you're, you, you're thinking about it. You can't say that anymore. That's not social distancing. That's true. Idea. That's true. But everybody's got to eat. Uh-huh. So here you go, bringing out things you hadn't used in a year, and you start putting out these appliances two minutes oh well, yeah go ahead you got in it. other words hurry up no okay yeah, yeah. all right here we go <laughs> you get out the electric skillet you uh-huh. get the extra little eye that plugs in to where you can set you uh, another skillet on there if you got more than four things cooking on the stove uh you got your microwave going here comes the vent fan and then who knows what you might even plug in the iron while you got the board set up in there where you can iron your drawers while you're waiting for your cake to rise get your apron looking nice yeah get your apron looking nice well you're going to be overloading your electrical system if you're not careful right so just because you trip a breaker doesn't mean you have what everybody says a dead short i hadn't quite figured out what those are just yet but anyway (laughs) i know what dead shorts are Yes. But but not a dead short. If you wash it more often, they won't get that. That's way. right. Yeah. It But it's normally things trip and go out because you've got them overloaded. So take a look at what's going on when a breaker trips. Have you got maybe something plugged in that you hadn't thought about before? Maybe you got a space heater going. You know, if you got a heater going, they pull a lot of juice. So just yeah. kind of be careful and be smart. And think before you called an electrician, you might save yourself a lot of money when you never really had a problem. So keep that in mind. And I hear that music, which means it's time for me to shut up. Well, it's, it's time for both of us to shut That's up. Right. But uh, we'll, we'll crank it up and do it again next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock here on 93.1. It's John Allen. It is Tricks of the Trade. Jimmy Leach is coming up next here. And our thanks to Economy Siding and Windows and West 10 Fence Company for being our title sponsors each weekend here on 93.1.
and kids, uh, parents, go wake up the young'uns and get them out of their pajamas and bring them down to see Santa Claus at, from 11 to 2 in downtown Jackson today. That is it. Jimmy Leach coming your way.